I wanted to love this generation, but it's really hard to. If you're in the community Discord server and you check it occasionally, you might notice the conversation we had discussing the Anantech i7-11700K review that was posted on the 5th of March. And performance, while somewhat impressive compared to Comet Lake, is still behind Zen 3 based chips. And when I say behind, I mean they're a solid out of the margin of error levels of behind. I mean it's not even close. The Ryzen 7 5800X not only outperforms the 11700K, it does so at a cheaper price and while using a solid 84% of the power. Even the Comet Lake chips won out over the Cypress Co found in the 11th gen, and there are tons of factors that I'll go into later in this video. The main issue is the multi-threading ability of the 10900K, which clocks in with 4 more threads allowing it to edge out the 16-thread 11700K. Also, the i9-11900K also has 8 cores and 16 threads like the i7, it's just clocked higher. While under the hood this generation is architecturally different from the 10th gen chips, utilizing a 14 nanometer port of Willow Cove, codenamed Cypress Cove. I'm gonna nerd out over this for a second, but a lot of the reasons why 11th gen performs the way it does is because of the cache adjustments made when moving from Skylake. Even though the chips have AVX512, meaning that for rendering and simulation workloads, they'll pummel Comet Lake, but in gaming you don't use 512-bit vectors really at all. As a result, the new ISA extensions sorta of go unused in the market these chips are targeted at. But I do appreciate the inclusion and hope it sticks around for Alder Lake. Moving back into the cache, it's ultimately what's affecting performance rather than an ISA change. In the cache pipelines of Skylake, which was derived into Comet Lake and retained identical core specs, you've got 32 kilobytes of L1 data cache followed by a 256 kilobyte block of L2 that can either be used to store data or function as a space for the L1 to evict data to. With Cypress Cove, the L1 cache was increased by 16 kilobytes, bringing overall L1 data cache up to 48 kilobytes, and L2 cache was also doubled, giving us half a meg to work with. This ultimately moved more of the data closer to the ALUs on chip. However, with a larger cache comes a larger latency when retrieving data. The Anantech review goes way more in depth with the latency times, and I'd recommend you check them out, but this is ultimately what is probably holding Cypress Cove back, especially since scaling cache up is a lot harder than scaling cache down. When optimizing Cypress Cove for 14 nanometer, Intel had to keep the specifications of the core the same as what was found in the 10 nanometer natively designed Willow Cove, while just making it work. The problem is you can't just do that and print features of a smaller lithographic node using a larger one. At scales this small, forces that are calculated to be within a certain range may not work when the circuitry becomes physically larger. You need more voltage and current to be able to switch transistors in larger arrays, thanks to voltage drop as data travels across the die, and power leakage, which occurs in any sort of integrated circuit. As a result, the overall design of every single circuit needs to be adjusted to work within the new power parameters. And this especially includes the SRAM cache, since it's so densely packed with transistors. This is also why the 11700K runs so much hotter than the 7 nanometer plus based 5800X, and also why it consumes so much more power. Willow Cove on 10 nanometer is actually clocked slightly lower than Cypress Cove, which screams along at just over 5 gigahertz. Integrated graphics were also updated to the ZLP variant, with the 11700K and the 11900K rocking 32 execution units. These integrated graphics are actually really capable when compared to the Intel UHD 630 we've been seeing for the past few years. It's a nice upgrade to see and it's actually kind of worth considering if you're looking to build an APU system. Alright, so now that I've got the architectural details out of the way, let's get into some of my ideas about where this went wrong and what I think could be solved with Alder Lake. Number 1. I really hope we finally see 10 nanometer on desktop. Even though we've seen since 2018 that it's been coming in high volume next year, I really want to see the blue team finally catch up in terms of process technology because 10 nanometer, while it seems like a pain to actually produce, 
offers performance that's overall impressive from an efficiency standpoint. Number two, it's impressive to see what Intel did here really. They backported an entire architecture onto a larger node. Typically you'd see a chip die shrink, meaning that you get improved wafer yields and power consumption. This generation, they did a die grow, because 10 nanometer still isn't ready for mass volume. And while I think the architecture is best suited for 10 nanometer and will probably stay there moving forward, it's an interesting product and I'm sure we'll see a lot more about the under the hood effort once these chips officially release later this month. Number three. I wouldn't necessarily avoid these chips, but wait for deals down the line. Like I've mentioned in this video, these chips not only use more power than the rising competitors, they also do so while having less overall performance. If you're in a pinch and need a chip to game on using integrated graphics, then go for it, but if you've got a GPU and you're thinking about buying an 11th gen processor, I would hold off and wait for Alder Lake. Number 4. I understand why people are frustrated with Intel with this product release. Keep in mind though that Intel didn't intentionally design a bad product. The logic makes perfect sense. Use a new architecture on an old and proven node. It seems like a great idea to me and I was hoping for a much larger gain in performance over 10th gen, but it failed to live up to our expectations. There's nothing wrong with failure, but as long as Intel is able to learn from their mistakes.